the most basic question is uh, what happens to the petrogenic material when it's oxidized? And so uh, even the incorporation of a single oxygen can have massive changes in the physical behavior. Uh, the simplest example would be methane versus methanol, right? The only difference between the two is an oxygen atom, but one's a gas, one's a liquid. And so it has a pronounced effect on the boiling point and physical properties. And so all of the spilled oil, when it enters the environment, undergoes oxidative processes. And those oxidative processes increase its boiling point, And it actually takes it out of the window of conventional analytical techniques. And so we're using unconventional techniques to address the products that are formed, not the ones that disappear. So all uh, toxicity or cleanliness assays uh, are largely based on conventional techniques. So they ignore the thousands of components that are formed, um, even though they could be more toxic than the things that were originally spilled. Because the bacteria doing the work, they don't care, right? It's just food for them. And they're gonna, they're gonna spit out whatever they uh, convert the material to. And of course the sun is gonna photo oxidize things to uh, various components and uh, the toxicity of those is largely unknown. So we have a three-pronged approach. So we have uh, Chris Reddy uh, at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. Um, he's gonna handle the, uh, the light to mid boiling range uh, of species. So these would be species that were left over. This is the classical type analysis. Uh, although he does it at much higher resolution than uh, other people. Um, and then the transformation of those products to oxidized products uh, will be handled at the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory. Uh, and that analysis is done by uh, Fourier Transform Ion Cyclotron Resonance Mass Spectrometry, which is a really fancy word for uh, very high resolution mass spectrometry because the petroleum itself is a very complex mixture. So when you start creating multiple products from every molecule, you get an ungodly complex mixture, right? And so that's what we can deal with at the Magnet Lab. And then ultimately, uh, those products are delivered to uh, Christoph uh, Apley, who will, who's at Bigelow uh, Laboratory, who will take those and test the toxicity. And so the idea is to uh, take the Macondo well oil and fractionate it based on its structure and then take uh, physical amounts of this material that we've isolated and we're going to photo oxidize it and we're going to biodegrade it and we're going to characterize the heck out of every single fraction by uh, GCGC which is Chris Reddy and ICR which is with myself. And then once we characterize it and generate the products from those structurally specific fractions of the crude oil, then we deliver them to Christoph, who tells us that, oh, well, this fraction is not toxic. Oh, well, this fraction is really toxic. And so it's basically a screening of the transformation products from the Macondo oil to see how toxic they are. So my lab is, is very good at uh, petroleum analysis. and so. The idea is that if we can separate and quantify bends, structural bends of petroleum, and then we can photo oxidize them and we can biodegrade uh, them and determine how toxic those bends are, then for future spills, you know, we could just take a sample, see how much of the material is in each bend, and then we could ultimately predict, you know, in the Gulf of Mexico, this is not toxic. Or in the Gulf of Mexico, man, this fraction is very toxic. And so it's to capture all the information, but it's also to provide a database for future models.